morning and welcome to this week's edition of After the Five, where Carter Jensen and Ann Mazinga join me to break down the news from the week. All right, guys, you ready to get started? Yep. All right, so the big announcement this week was Walmart and Flipkart. We're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm just going to ask you a quick question about all the topics, and it's going to be buy or sell. All right, so Walmart and Flipkart, are you buying or selling this acquisition? I'm, I'm going to sell. Carter, I'm going to sell. I, I think they have bigger things. Sell it. All right. Bigger things to worry about. Mm-hmm. I feel that like they are still trying to gain traction here in the United States, figuring out you know their recent acquisitions, all of that. I, I still think they have a lot of ground to cover here in the U.S. with their mm-hmm. core market before they can start being aspirational and making these huge purchases overseas. All right, and. Bye. I just want them you to keep buy. going. Just keep <laughs> buying all the things. Let's see where this goes. Right, right, right. The comic value of it is incredible. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm on sell too. I just, I just, I think it's just going to be hugely distracting. I don't see how they're going to win. So, all right, Best Buy. This one's local. New logo they announced. If you haven't seen it, as I said in the in my version of the Fast Five video, it kind of looks like the cool color of cultural Viagra. So, and buying or selling Best Buy's new branding effort sell sell okay yeah. i was all in on this one why um i i totally, have the two marketers here so i I'm totally curious. get your point earlier about how um you know rebranding can often be like a, a rallying thing for a company to do um, getting people behind new directions but right. i expected more i mean they just moved the tag outside they redid this in a test format a few couple of years ago and nobody was talking about it that much okay. i just think you know, they're, I love Best Buy and what they're doing. I, I really I expect more from them. And this just feels like a, are we really making this big of a deal of it? So good effort, wrong execution. Yes. So would I you think, still do the, do the rebranding? Yeah, I, okay. I think rebranding so, is that's fine. Smart, I think that this... makes sense. But like, if you're going to rebrand, like, come on, let's rebrand and get some more stuff behind it. This just feels like. Uh, I'm gonna just there, and I and actually I feel feel sorry for my friends and fellow advertisers who probably spent so many hours thousands on just of hours putting that new logo together. Um, how many hours of meetings happened? Right. Hours of life. I'm just picturing wasted. like the uh, so Carter, you gotta be the, I, I, the yeah. easel boards Go with the, the drapes over them in this conference room. <laughs> okay. and the Don, the Don Draper meetings. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Which I, I will say does actually happen. Right? Yeah. Um, so you buy it or sell it? Uh, okay. So when you when you talk about the Fast Five, which I think yeah. is really important to listen to, and then the contrast that Anne brings to the table, I can see both sides of the ship, right? Yeah. So I'm going to first start with Anne. I get where you're coming from because when I first saw it, I was like, "That's it." And I saw it, you know, at first wherever whatever platform I was looking at in the morning, it was just really, and it just didn't work for me. It didn't like look good. It I, for some reason I just couldn't get my kind of eyes around it, and, and it just like. The, Really, just move the tag to the outside, change the font slightly, and that's what you come up with. Um, but Chris, you bring up some really good points, though, in this fact that, like, you know, rallying the troops and kind of bringing this yeah. new age of Best Buy into into the fold and, and constantly just kind of pushing forward and telling everyone, hey, we're okay, we're constantly innovating. And right. this is kind of our outwardly facing flag to say, mm-hmm. this is just the next chapter for us. Um, so, so I think I think that there is some promise to it. I think there is the good and the bad. I think when you come down to it, I think the effort was well placed. However, I think we probably as consumers probably wanted to see, or as marketers probably wanted to yeah, see a little sure. bit of a different change. But I think we could say the same thing about, imagine all the iconic internet brands that have rebranded right. over the last five years, right? Mm-hmm. Remember when Instagram rebranded their camera icon and mm-hmm. the world fell apart? <laughs> yeah, right. right. But now we don't even think about yeah, it. We realize right. how how like well placed yeah. that rebrand was. And you compare the old logo to the new one, you're like, well, clearly, right? right? You know, mm-hmm. so so I think it's important to kind of see both sides of this. I think yeah. they could have done a little better, but I appreciate the uh, yeah. the thought and the vision forward. Yeah, that's yeah. no, interesting. I, I mean, one of the things I love about doing this with you guys and just in general is I always I love this phrase: List, listen with the willingness to alter your point of view. Like you're not really listening to somebody unless you're willing to alter your point of view. Totally. So as I sat here and I processed what you guys said, I was really trying to you know figure out does it change my opinion? I think what you helped me get to, I don't think it changed my opinion, but it evolved my opinion. And right. I think as I listen to you guys, what it tells me is actually. Regardless of what the execution, it's probably a very low risk move. And so right. ultimately, if it is something that stands to be a new, you know, flagpole or new North Star for your company culturally, it's probably a low risk way to do that. So I think I, I think through this conversation, actually, I got to that place even more so probably than I was before. So that, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. 
Um, hopefully the listeners like that, that type of conversation too. All right, next up, Indochino. So Indochino is a new brand on the scene, okay? New retailer on the scene. Uh, they specialize in made to measure men's clothing. You come into the store, you get measured, they keep your measurements, and then the idea is they form a long-term relationship you, with you around suits and tailored men's clothing. Um, they've announced that they're gonna open a significant number of new stores over the next four months. Uh, thoughts on this, buying or selling Indochino as the next wave of retailing? I, I'm buy- I love this format, and I think it's because Sweet. I have been buried by the alternative so many times. Mm-hmm. And I think I brought this up maybe with you two, maybe mm-hmm. not on the After the Five, no, but yeah. a quick little story. Rewind two months, you know, the the tenth friend of mine is getting married. I have to go get a pair yeah, of pants at Macy's. Right. I have to find the one guy yes. who's yeah. buried in the back of some men's section yeah. and he pulls out and dusts off this three ring binder with pages falling out and he right. finds my name written in some sort of cursive in the top right corner and those are my sizes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then when I go back next week for the next wedding that we have to get pants there for, then that's gonna be gone. Like mm-hmm. and so if if Indochino and companies like this are able to take on the experience and form that relationship, why would we go anywhere else? Um, They know your size, we know the fit, we know what works. Um, Eliminating that entire kind of barrier of having to go to a mall or into a store again and again and again, Mm -hmm. I think in itself is such a promising uh, fortune for what's coming for these types of businesses. Mm -hmm. So I I love it. That's awesome. I agree. Um, I think that the as you start to look at millennial buying patterns too, and they're looking for a higher quality product. I mean, you, I think you wrote this in the fast five written version or in the, yeah, in the fast five written version, but what's old is new again. And yeah, tailoring, right. it's if you're going to really invest in clothing, tailoring is a huge component of that. So not only is Indochino making it easier by providing more store locations to actually go in on a more consistent basis and get your clothes altered to fit you specifically um, mm-hmm. and to, you know, flex with your changing sizes, you know, like when you get super buff during the summer mm-hmm. right. and then you pack on the extra weight during the <laughs> right, winter, during the right? Winter, like yeah. you don't have winters. to, yeah. you don't have to do the rubber band pregnancy trick. You just <laughs> can go in and get a new pair of pants pretty quickly and easily and with somebody that you've developed a relationship with. So I love it. I think um, great, great way to bring, especially men into these kinds of shopping yeah. experiences. We see lots of women's uh, concepts like this. And so the more men's concepts, the better. Yeah. That's a great point. I should have touched on that actually in the, the Fast Five video. But yeah, that when I talk to companies, that's that's something that I, I usually tell them is like, go back to what was once old or what's, what was once commonplace. Mm-hmm. Why did it go away? And what changed? And can, can technology get that back? Was there something mm-hmm. inherently there in terms right. of the efficiency and quality of time and the quality of the experience that you can get back now through technology. This is, a, right. I think, a great example of this. There are many examples of this. Um, you know, even curbside delivery is an example of this mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Or local last mile delivery is Absolutely. an example of this, like the general store. So, um, yeah, that's that's a cool point that you brought up. Um, yeah, I'm long on this too. I think it's uh, I think they're a really, really smart company. All right, next up. I know this one will be fun. Sears. And let's start with you on this one. Sears has signed a partnership with Amazon to sell their diehard tire brand on their website, following in the lines of Chico's that we talked about last week. So, Anne, yeah. where do you come down on this? Buy or sell? Uh, I'm going to buy for right now. Um, I think that... Are you in the market for tires? Probably. Aren't we all Actually, always in today. the market now for tires? I, I feel like it. We're doing that and, it and it is a terrible thing to have to go and do. But I think... What I'm I'm more interested in is the larger vision that the CEO of Sears talks about, um, and what they're what this is kind of making a path forward for them um, for, it, which is changing what their store concepts are going to be, what okay. the footprint looks like. Um, I, you and I talked about this. I think that it allows mm-hmm. them the opportunity to rethink about what the tire centers could mm-hmm. be and what you could do in that mm-hmm. space. Um, and so I. I think if you're look, talking about experience design, what, what other kind of opportunities do you have to serve your Sears customer while they're waiting to get their tires changed? Do you, you know, have a Kenmore appliance outfitted kitchen where you're right. serving coffee or things like that? Mm-hmm. Um, and then also looking at the Sears store itself and how do you reduce that footprint and reduce what kind of uh, product you're selling in the store mm-hmm. to really make Sears keep going forward and try yeah. to stay alive. That's a, yeah, when you talk about the efficiency of time, like having to get like auto maintenance done, yeah. it's, it's one of those things that just sucks and just yeah. kills everyone's time. So right. if you can capture that moment, right. yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, Carter, what do you think? Yeah, I, I like... I, 
I can't say I love it. I, I really like it. I think, <laughs> Wait, have you been in a Sears? I've never. Partner? Well, I have never been in a Sears. So here's a great. Yeah, it's a great example. But how? Yeah, how cheap? Yeah, right. yeah. When was the last time you read Gen X? Are you? Yeah. Um, no, I think it was interesting, Chris. You bring up in your articles this week about how Sears has been able to get and get their product with this new partnership in front of the millions and millions and millions of people that sit on Amazon. Right. And when you look at all the new kind of discovery or kind of initial searches for new products happening on Amazon, maybe it's not tires, but the point is, is that you're now placing your tire centers on the busiest main street in yeah. e-commerce world. Yeah. Um, and if digital that, mall. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, a digital mall that's being visited more than anything else. So right. if you can all of a sudden say, hey, we're going to spin off the tire centers, we're going to put these... Um, um, put these products on Amazon, the, the, like I said, the busiest mall, busiest main street around, take a, just a portion of that and drive them to store and then potentially capitalize on that time where people mm-hmm. are sitting there. Um, it's better than no one walking in in the first place. Yeah, I think so. that's it too. Like, what other choice in hell does yeah. Sears have, right. right? Like, let's not poo-poo this one. I mean, this one is at least creative and you could at least see a shred of something. Totally. Right. All right, cool. Uh, let's finish it up then. We've got Nestle and Starbucks have entered into a partnership. So, uh, Starbucks has sold to Nestle for seven billion dollars the right to distribute their products to grocers and other retail outlets. Are you guys buying or selling this move by Starbucks? Carter, uh, I'm going to buy it. I don't understand. You know, in terms of the research that I've done in the past, like understanding the full intricacies of this, I think are um, I still am trying to invest into it. I think you had a really interesting point of view in the in the Fast Five that you wrote this week. Um, but I think it's fascinating to see how Starbucks is continuing to find ways to. Uh, expand their reach as they continue to be one of the best omni-channel companies around. Um, So it'll be fun to see how they continue to do that. And this partnership, I'm sure, is just one of many. One of many. Yeah. Um, Agree. I think um, I'm buying. I think Starbucks is like, stick to what you're good at. And that's the stores and the experience and the mobile app. Like, that's where your focus should be. Um, it's also important to make sure that I can get Starbucks coffee in my grocery store and I don't have to go to a, a Starbucks, but let's be honest. I mean, you're going to Starbucks a lot. So let's yeah, right. focus on how you keep me coming into that store. That's where they're making it. Yeah, money. that's good. Yeah, that's great. That's you're right. That's the most, that's the most important behavior. Like Starbucks is the third place, right? And yeah. it's for that reason, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what drives the sales at shelf too. So right. interesting. Okay. Well, that was awesome. That was Great, great discussion. Um, For those of you that are interested, we're actually now going to, I had the chance to visit Amazon Go in Seattle on Wednesday. Uh, We're going to break that down. Carter and Anne are going to ask me some questions. They've never been there, so I'm going to give my opinion and then listen to their questions and try to answer them as best you can. So if you're interested in that, check out our other video on Amazon Go, which we'll be uploading shortly. As always, be careful out there.